Hello, my name is Dr. Katie Smith and I'm a paleontologist at Georgia Southern University. Today I'd like to share with you a little about whale brains, specifically some research about the brain of the ancient whale, Georgicetus bogolensis. When you think about whale brains, what comes to mind? Is it that whales have big complex brains? That whales are smart and are good at problem solving? But what about ancient whales? Here's Georgia Cetus with its skeleton reconstructed and its bones as they were as they were discovered in the ground. This whale is 41 million years old and is the first of its kind found. Georgia Cetus means whale of Georgia and it was found at the Alvin W. Vogel electric generating plant near Augusta. It's just over 10 feet long. To study the brains of fossil animals, we need to look at the cavity inside of the skull where the brain was. This is called an endocast. We can create a digital endocast from data obtained through a regular CT scan, uh, something that you could have done at the hospital. Here is geology student Kelsey preparing our patient, the Georgia Cetus skull, for scanning. This is an image of the top of Georgia Cetus' skull. When I remove the skull, you can see the endocast that was produced from the CT scan data. Are you surprised by the way it looks? The endocast is not an exact replica of the brain. It shows the surface of everything that filled the brain case, including protective membranes and a massive vascular structure called the rete mirabile. The volume of the endocast, including all these extra structures, is calculated as 534 cubic centimeters. When we subtract the extra material and convert the new measurement to mass, we find that Georgia Cetus's brain weighs about 450 grams, approximately one pound or the weight of one soccer ball. This is what some other whale brains look like. Zygoriza, Saracetus, Georgia Cetus, and Remington Acetus are all fossil whales. Phocena is a harbor porpoise, which is a modern whale. The porpoise brain is bulbous and doesn't have the long, narrow part at the front. This long part is the olfactory nerve, which is important for smelling. Maybe smelling was more important to ancient whales than it is to porpoises. The brain volume of the different whales is noted at the top of each image. The brain size between the porpoise and Georgia Cetus is not that different, but how big is the brain relative to the body? This is a question we ask when we compare brain sizes. To determine the brain to body size ratio, we need to know the size of Georgia Cetus's body. We can measure the length of the skeleton and from that calculate its mass. When we do this, we find that Georgia Cetus weighs 672 kilograms or about 1400 pounds. This is about the same size as the biggest bottlenose dolphin shown here. To describe differences in brain sizes, scientists use a measure called the encephalization quotient or EQ for short. This shows us how big the brain is compared to what we would expect it to be compared to the known brain and body sizes of living animals. If this number is greater than one, then the brain is bigger than expected for body size. If it's lower than one, then it's smaller than expected. Georgia Cetus has an EQ of 0.47, which means its brain size is smaller than expected. The bottlenose dolphin, in comparison, has an EQ greater than 4, which means it has the big brains we've come to expect from whales. Some modern whales still have small brains for their body size, though. These are the whales that are huge, like the sperm whale shown here. Whale brain size relative to body size began to increase around 34 million years ago. Why this is so is still something scientists are studying. It may be because this is the time that whales began developing complex social relationships. Thanks for listening. 
The next time you're in Statesboro, come to the Georgia Southern Museum and see Georgia Cetus for yourself. Bye!